Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Hallmark movies. Hey, I'm Panda, and I like Hallmark movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark movies. And I'm Topher, and I write Hallmark movies. And And this this is the Deck Deck the Hallmark Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Boy. Oh man. man, what a big day. What an exciting day. It's one of those yeah. days where you wake up and you're like, is it Christmas Day? Because mm. I'm so excited. And then you realize it's September. And it's 95 it's five degrees, degrees outside because yeah, we live in Satan's home It's still, home a, special still a special day. Still a special day, though, Dan. special day. I would say Christmas, Thanksgiving. And toe for pain. Toe for pain. <laughs> That's right. Toe for pain. No, I'm with you. I'll take it. That's hey. right. Uh, toe for welcome to the pod. It is so great to be with you guys. Oh, my goodness. So for you wrote A Gift to Remember, among other things, and we just reviewed it. Uh, it came out Tuesday. Now, Topher, true story, you saw on Twitter we were going to review this one, and you responded like, oh, man, I better start drinking or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so that means that, A, you're prepared for the worst, but, B, that you've listened to the podcast before, correct? I confess to both things, oh, yes. Mm. And that you drink a lot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I call them my Christmas spirits. Right, yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, well, thank you for listening, and also thank you for for joining us. Uh, we we had a lot of fun with a gift to remember. Um, I I loved it. I've seen it before. I loved it. I love getting to watch it again. And it was one of those. I, I've seen it, I believe, once before, and it was I think in 2017. So I was able to forget it enough, and not, I mean, uh, the best way, to uh, where, to where I could wa- I could watch it and then be like, oh, I kind of remember what's going to happen, but not quite. And so it was a lot of fun. So thank you for for writing it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you watching it. And I am here to answer any questions you have about traumatic brain injuries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, no. It's clear that the, the nurse singular in this movie knows all about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nurse Nancy knows what's up. That's right. <laughs> Uh, tell us, uh, bring it, bring us back a little bit, a few years, and tell us how you kind of got um, involved with Hallmark in, in the first place, and how that relationship began. Um, so I had my first meeting with Hallmark in 2016. Um, I had a play that had gone off Broadway, and I had a um, had signed with a manager out of that. So he brought me out to L.A. to do a series of meetings um, with different producers and networks, just, um, you know, kind of getting to know them. And I had requested a meeting with Hallmark. I was his first client that had requested a meeting with Hallmark. What made Um, you want to request a meeting with Hallmark? My uh, my mother and my sister keep them on um, mm. the entire holiday season. Yeah. And um, so whether uh, whether I liked it or not, I was mainlining horror, uh, Hallmark movies uh, <laughs> for a couple of years there. And I was so intrigued by their brand of storytelling and and had some sincere questions about why they told stories the way they did, where the opportunities were for um, expanding the kinds of stories that they're telling and um, who those stories are about. And um, but I was really intrigued as a playwright um, with by their relationship with their audience, yeah. um, because there's a lot of direct engagement there. Mm-hmm. And from coming up in theater, that was something I could relate to. And I had a really great conversation with them. And the plan was I had theater commitments through the fall. This was in March of 16. Um, And so the plan was I'd make myself available for work in like September, October. And then they came back to me two weeks later and said, we've got a project. If you want to jump into screenwriting right now, um, you can. And So that became my summer prince, which I learned screenwriting on the fly with wow. some really, really great producers on that project who were very patient and understood that I was learning on the job. Wow. And my summer prince led to Broadcasting Christmas, and Broadcasting Christmas led to another movie that I did a rewrite on, and then they ended up going with another writer after that. It um, was a project that had been in development for a long time. Um, and it's, it's one you've covered. And, um, can you tell and, us what it is? I cannot. Oh. Uh, your, your version was better. Is yeah. what you're trying to say. 
Uh, well, I'm just saying that all versions are different. Uh, <laughs> it's a great and, answer from Tover. But let me ask you this. When you listen to that episode of us covering the movie that your rewrite didn't get put on, did you take any sort of, I don't know, joy uh, in, 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 a, in, in our take on it? I absolutely <laughs> did because I never watched the movie. I only listened to your episode. Yeah, um, that's right. Because what they – what would come out similar to what I had written would be frustrating and what would come out different would also be frustrating. So I just avoided it altogether. Fair. And then I listened to your episode and I'm like, mm-hmm, I wondered why they didn't fly too. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and then he sips his coffee. It's like the Kermit the Frog meme. That was perfect. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you this. We've talked to a couple other writers before. Uh, you're, I think the first that we've done, uh, for, for everyone, we've done a few on the Patreon, but this is going to be released to everybody. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, the other writers say they're really not on set, like during filming. It's a 15 day shoot. Like, are you, yeah. have you been on the set of any of your, you've done five of these in three years. Have you been on the set of any of them? Yeah, I was on the set for My Summer Prince in Utah, and I was on the set for Broadcasting Christmas in uh, Connecticut. And they offered to bring me out to Vancouver for Gift to Remember too, but I had a theater commitment in Atlanta that prevented me from being able to. So is that fu- like is that a fun experience? Do you get to put in a lot of like? Do you get to, to throw anything? Do any rewrites or anything? Or are you just pretty much there to observe them kind of acting your your work? Really, just there sitting at Video Village watching you know the wonder and excitement of a movie being made. Mm. Um, and then hanging out around craft services so that you can walk away with a couple of celebrity stories. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like to, to be the person who wrote the movie and then you're seeing, uh, them perform it and maybe changing some things, um, mm. and, and saying things in a way that you didn't expect it to be said. What is that like for somebody who this is your thing and you're kind of handing it off to these people to figure it out? Um, it's, it can be a source of such delight and surprise, oh. um, particularly um, like using the example of, of broadcasting Christmas with Melissa Joan Hart and Jack A. Um, there's the way that you pictured it when you were writing it. And then there's a beloved television icon doing it in their voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what my words sound like when Jack A says it. <laughs> uh, that's cool. So that's amazing. Um, and I know plenty of, uh, my colleagues have, um, horrific stories about what producers and networks can do to your script. Um, but in my experience with Hallmark, there's been a lot of respect for the script and for the screenwriter. Um, and when something needs to change, they tend to, prioritize including me in that conversation. So yeah. in that way, they're a really good boss. So to hit on that a little bit, obviously everybody we talk to from Hallmark is salt of the earth people. Wonderful. They always have great things to say. We do hear that the writing process, sometimes they go through this Hallmark machine where they take scripts kind of from everywhere. People who are, who have, we interviewed a lawyer who's written scripts for Hallmark, but he's a lawyer, full-time job. And then they just take them and they make them their own with their own people. And so, yeah, are you one of those guys? Like, are you one of those guys where Hallmark goes, Hey, we like the script, but it doesn't really fit our brand. Let's call Topher, see what he has to say. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, or we bought a book. Yeah. Um, uh, Roman love was an adaptation of a book. Gift to remember was also an adaptation of a book. Um, Gift to remember two is exciting because there is no sequel to the book. So I was on my own with that one. Okay. And, um, but with the blessing of the author and awesome. Cool. So do they um, do they like give you kind of the basic outline of what they're looking for in the movie or are you given free reign to create basically the entire scenario, the, the whole story from the ground up? Certainly on the first pass, yeah. um, everybody says and and now, you know, the next project I do will be the sixth movie I've done for them. Right. I'm familiar with the recipe Uh Um, and I know some people call it the formula. I think that's um, a little reductive, Mm -hmm. Um, but there is a recipe. And if you want to make cookies, there's a couple of ingredients that have to go in or at the end of it, you're not getting cookies. Right. Um, Have we ever thought of making like really good cookies though? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is, okay, so I've got my baseline recipe and at the end of this, I get cookies. Now what I throw into it, is going to be what makes it distinctive. 
and um, and what gives it a flavor that hopefully people might find pleasurable and occasionally unexpected. I've always said that the I've, I've used the analogy of a cheeseburger, which everyone, but the idea is comfort food. Like Hallmark makes comfort food, right? Everybody yeah. like they want, they want like you want to go back for the same taste of the cookies that you've had over and over again. Uh, and that's, that's a big part of it. So I guess my question is, is the only screenwriting you've ever done, at least on credit is for Hallmark. Yeah. Now, is that because right. they locked you up as a, as c- contractually and going, Hey, you're our guy. We're going to send you these scripts. Or is it just because you've had such a great time and you would rather just work with Hallmark? Um, it's a little from column A and a little from column B. Okay. Mm. Um, Gift to Remember 2 was the uh, last project that I had on the slate, and that one was a pleasant surprise. Um, and and so I've done five movies in three years, and that's just kept me busy. Mm-hmm. And um, I finally, in writing for television, found a way to support my playwriting habit. Mm. Yep. And... and um, so thanks to TV, I can finally afford to do theater, which was what I was doing for the 15 years prior to Hallmark coming into my life. And, and I've written a script on spec that we're shopping around now that is very not Hallmark. I wanted to write a horror movie. Nice. And, um, but having a consistent gig for one thing is, um, a rare, uh, dream fulfilled for any TV writer. And so to have that relationship and to be able to come back to it and keep telling stories, um, I like their audience and so do they. Um, and it's an exciting time to be writing for this network because, um, we're advancing storytelling forward and, um, and being able to be a part of that time in the story of Hallmark yeah. um, is a really gratifying thing. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to the, the, the mm-hmm. recipe, if if you get uh, other people's uh, ideas or maybe full scripts and you're tasked to, to Hallmark it up, what would you say are some of the ingredients that uh, people that haven't written for Hallmark before uh, leave out? That you're like, man, you, you need this, you need this, and you're and you're missing it. What are some of those ingredients that some people might miss when they're trying to write for Hallmark? That's a really good question. Thank you. Um, that is what I get paid for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why it makes the big bucks. That's right. Um, uh, a lot of it is just the simple elements of romantic comedy, mm. um, but so much of it is a structural thing. You have 85 minutes to tell this story. Act one is going to be 20 minutes long and each subsequent act following a commercial break is going to be 10 to 12 minutes. Um, And so I'm looking for a way to streamline the source material to honor the intention of the original author and also just find a concise way to tell this story in 85 minutes. Um, And so when I'm breaking down, it's looking at what are the essentials, who are these people Um, and my personal priority, because we do have, um, the opportunity to tell a lot of stories with female leads, um, is, is she maintaining agency over the course of the entire story? Basically, is this a woman that things happen to, or is it a woman that makes things happen? Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, And have you ever had anything like you mentioned that you kind of want to make things your own? You want to put in your own ingredients. Uh, we talked to, to one editor who there was a a movie switch for Christmas and they had some flashbacks that gave some clarity to some of the things that we were confused by, but Hallmark was like flashbacks. It takes away from the flashbacks. I was about to say, there's no way they let them do flashbacks. Yeah, no flashbacks. (laughs) Um, So has there ever been anything that you wanted to put in the movie that you think would work really good and that you think that would make it uh, be set apart, but Hallmark was like, eh, no flashbacks? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> good man man he is set for a screenwriter yeah. so verbose yeah. uh, i uh i do have a question now we we said we wanted to get you on as a screenwriter but really you're on because you were you played hairdresser and identity thief uh-huh. this is true and, and i yeah. really want to know a little bit about how you got chosen for that part i have assume it has something to do with shooting in atlanta but uh i just want to know how you got that coveted role of hairdresser in that jason bateman because joint. we all try yeah, yeah we, we i tried. was there was you, you uh, they they ruled me out right away they said you're you can't do it it's crazy 
they took my eyebrows, guys. The things they did to my eyebrows. <laughs> had this teeny tiny little ex- uh, parentheses. Um, yeah, for about five minutes, I decided I wanted to be in movies. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so I got an agent in Atlanta. And Identity Thief was one of the first auditions I ever did. Um, and it ended up being a fantastic experience on the day. Um, Melissa McCarthy came in, they decided on site that they were going to, um, throw out the script for the scene. And, um, and so when she was talking to the director, um, she invited me over, uh, to figure out what the improvisation was going to be. Um, and then, so they shot Melissa first and then they set up my shot, my close up, um, and they were using the salon employees as background. <laughs> yeah. And Melissa runs over to the hairdressers and says, Hey, you guys want to find like two or three things that you can just do over and over so that your shots match and then you'll end up in the movie. And, and then she wow. comes back over to stand in for my setup. And I said, that was very kind. <laughs> she said, I was short and I was fat, but I was consistent. And that's how I got in the movies. <laughs> Man. Man, Melissa McCarthy just seems like the best person yeah. at this point, right? She was amazing. That's so she was cool. amazing. I can't the believe. Was, after that movie hit, um, the only thing I was getting called in for was gay fill in the blank. Mm. <laughs> and... Um, because of my, you know, resounding success. Hey, at, been at, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and some of those movies were really, really offensive. Mm. Um, and and I realized that if I was going to pursue a career as acting in film, I was going to get called in for a lot of gay this thing and gay that thing, and. Um, and so I decided I would concentrate my energies on creating material if for the, actors. If the Russell title Trump. of the role is gay something, we're not off to a great start. No, not right? really. Exactly. not exactly. off to a rip-roaring start for uh, yeah. quality. Uh, so you said you wanted to get some celebrity stories from around the craft service table. Anything, uh, you know, pop up in your head that you could tell us or, you know, the thing that you remember most from those trips to the, the movie set? We were filming Broadcasting Christmas uh, leading up to the 2016 election, and um, uh, Melissa Joan Hart was the Connecticut organizer for Gary Johnson. um, Fighting that somehow that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's not a surprise. If you say so. (laughs) And. and Jack A and Cynthia Gibb were both firmly with her, and um, and then Dean Kane was Dean Kane. Mm, and, yeah, he was. Uh, and so there was. <laughs> there That's about of, all you can really say, and us put it out on the podcast yeah. is the problem. <laughs> yeah, and so that I just I remember that being the kind of the prevailing sentiment around set on that one, and yet everyone got along great, and everybody wow. Um, that's cool. to make a wonderful movie. Were they fighting um, like politically? Like, were they having some good arguments offset? Um, it, I would say lively discussions. It was a group of intelligent people with contrasting ideas. Man, yeah, that's great. Look at you, this guy. <laughs> if screenwriting doesn't work out, maybe writing some politicians. <laughs> Man, stuff I tell you what, it was future. great. I love it. <laughs> um, Marina Sirtis on My Summer Prince was one of the most delightful actors I have ever encountered on any project ever. Hmm. Um, and, um, and was so much fun and people don't think of counselor Troy from star Trek as being laugh a minute, (laughs) Uh, uh, but she was amazing. I would work with her on every single movie if they'd let me, you know, I'd never heard of nor seen broadcasting Christmas and, uh, Melissa Joan Hart and Dean Cain don't exactly sell me. So Uh, maybe um, that's fair. That's fair. (laughs) Oh, I'm sold. I love Melissa Joan Hart. Mm. Big fan. Broadcasting Christmas is my husband's favorite movie. Of my really? Life. Huh. Yeah. So you What's your that? favorite of the five that you've done? Um, whoever paid me the most. There it is. Um, it. <laughs> <laughs> Roman Love paid for my wedding. And so right now, Roman Love is my favorite movie. That's yes. I have one more question. I think we're going to dive into Gift to Remember after that. 
uh, you did tweet out in, in July, hey, a gift to Cherish is coming to theaters. And then we, not to theaters, just kidding, coming to Hallmark. You know, I the, really, home, the home theater. Hallmark theaters. The home, uh, Hallmark theater. Uh, and yeah. then now we hear it's a gift to remember two, even remember or, or whatever we call it. Like, <laughs> uh, what, was that change? Like, were you uh, on board with that change? Or was that, did you want to call it a gift to Cherish? Because that's what you wrote and that's what's close to your heart. Um, and and that is still in flux. I hear we may get a subtitle under that sequel. Okay. Oh. okay. So we may get the best of all worlds. Boy, that's a that's I would a love plot to call thing. it two gift, two cherish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two gift, two cherish. <laughs> yeah, and lastly, like we're not going back to the memory well, are we? For a gift to cherish. Like, I can I can assure you that Aiden is feeling much better now. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. 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 I'm Perfect. In. Yeah, she falls down. It's a whole thing. <laughs> she yeah. can't remember anything. Yeah, Save something for the trilogy. Uh, Come on. Right. She is antrograde uh, it's actually, amnesia. Can't make yeah, new memories. Bill Pullman and Sandra Bullock in the third one. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, a gift to remember. You said it was based off of a book, which, of course, we've all read. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talk about uh, talk about the, how it differs uh, writing a, a, a screenplay just from what you want to write about and gift to remember two versus writing it based off of the book. Um, basing it off of the book. The thing that stresses me out, um, I think to an appropriate degree when I'm adapting those books is knowing I'm going to toss out 70% of the material in this book. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, Sometimes have the opportunity to um, have conversations with the author of the original work. They have no control over it um, because they sell the rights to Hallmark. And but it's important to me that I try to honor whatever their intention was yeah. uh, yeah. with it. And so if I can have those conversations with the author directly, then that's great. Um, like I did with Melissa Hill. Um, or if I'm just trying to extract that from reading the book. Um but yeah, just trying to streamline the dang thing, yeah. and figure out what we can squeeze in in eighty-five minutes. Yeah, maybe you, maybe you can give me some insight here because, like, the idea of uh, a girl hitting a guy with a bike, making him lose his memory, like, c- couldn't like, why was it so essential for Hallmark? Uh, and they do this a lot to to buy the rights to a book of an idea that isn't necessarily the most. Like I've Hallmark-y. never, I've, I've no, well, or just I've never heard of that idea before. Like that's an idea that maybe has been written about before. Someone losing their memory and falling in love, blah blah blah. Why? Why do they? Why do they choose in a to, notebook? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, or, 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 uh, yeah. A while, or sleeping, while sleeping, while you were sleeping. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, while you were sleeping yeah. was a really consistent comparison so, we got. Yeah. And so why buy the 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 rights to a book to adapt if they're just going to change? 70% if you're going to chuck out seventy percent of it. Well, because I mean, and you've seen the, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at the reviews now of Goldfinch that are coming out now and, um, going too precious with a beat for beat literary adaptation is usually a setup for failure anyway. Mm. Um, because the nature of what makes a book pleasurable to read and what makes a movie pleasurable to watch are just two entirely different experiences. Right. Um, Often, um, like I know with Anita Hughes, the author of Roman Love, um, the network has a more extended relationship with the author and they're acquiring four or five of their titles at the same time Um, and then putting all of those um, in process uh, for adaptation. Um, And then... Yeah, and and they also take um, screenplays based off of pitches kind of in a more traditional sense. Um, But what is a literary adaptation if not a very long form pitch for a movie? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So let me ask you this. uh, Clearly the author of A Gift to Remember was happy with what came out to give you blessing to to make a sequel. Um, What is that like? Uh, Like I would say from both, I, I, I guess from your perspective, putting something together that is someone else's baby and you're trying to, to kind of narrow down and, and get a concentrate reduction sauce of the 30% that's the most important. What is that? How nerve wracking is that the first does, does the author of the book get any sort of say, do they, they read the script first or do they just say you can take it? I hope it's good. I mean, like what do, did the author see the movie and like react? I mean, I, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, I know Melissa saw the first one and we've uh, struck up a little Twitter friendship 
And um, she's Irish, and so the the movie did not premiere um, in Europe until the following year, um, and they changed the title. Um, and uh, where it was a gift for Christmas, mm, classic. That type, that's nothing. <laughs> and, but, um, yeah, when you know, and I think you know, it's absolutely essential to acknowledge that the plot of the first movie is bananas. Yes, <laughs> uh, and and, um, and so picking up from that point of. Aiden had amnesia and he chooses to move to Philadelphia. That's where we leave things at the end of the first movie. Um, he's about a week out from uh, having been hospitalized for a traumatic brain injury that we, she caused. We don't know if something comes to his mind a week later where he decides to go back to Akron. <laughs> oh, right. no. oh, I forgot. Uh, I, forgot. Uh, I had a child. <laughs> I'm a member of the Akron Players, a barbershop quartet. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> The thing that intrigued me in approaching the second one is because the first movie is so focused on Darcy helping helping him recover these memories um, and figure out who the heck he is. Um, in the second movie, we have the opportunity to see them working as a couple for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and what that dynamic is like, that was really interesting to me. It was interesting... Uh, being able to tell my first story that I don't have to wait until the fin final 30 seconds um, for them to express physical affection. Mm. Uh, it's new and, and different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so from the beginning, you know, I don't have to do um, the interrupted kisses. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not putting this couple at threat of breaking up due to a misunderstanding. Mm, that's my least favorite. Yep. And having the deck cleared on that and um, was really liberating and and gave me the chance to kind of explore the story in a new direction. How difficult was it uh, for you to figure out what this second one, and obviously we'll know more once we see it, but what that movie is leading towards? Like one of the things... My critiques on the uh, the Father Christmas trilogy that they had on Movies and Mysteries the past three years is you have your, your first one and they fall in love and then the next two are just a, a, a snooze fest um, because <laughs> because there's no they're not building towards anything in my opinion of the relationship. No, I love Mary and Father Christmas. I don't know what you're talking you're about. You're a liar. <laughs> uh, how difficult was it for you to figure out what are we leading towards? What is everything? Because it's not that they're going to kiss. It's something else, obviously. Right. Um, that was... Once I figured out what we were going to do, um, and, and we went through a lot of discussions between my network executives and my producer, Angela, who worked with me on the first one and worked on Roman Love. So this is our third movie in a row together. Um, and then it was really arriving at that idea of, okay, this is more, you think about um, the Mr. and Mrs. Smith um, not the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. Okay. I'm thinking right. yeah. Maggie Smith. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and the um, the idea of really setting them up as a pair. Um, and so when the challenge comes up in the movie, it's something that they have to, through pluck and know-how, find a way to overcome together. Yeah. And so rather than making the obstacle internal in the relationship... It's putting the obstacle out in the world and then finding a way for them to navigate that. Yeah. Together. And I'll just say the decision to make them join a gang and get involved with drug trade was a, a surprise. That's it's bold. Yeah. It's really bold and, and, for and I, her. And I think Absolutely. it's going to be good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be good. So I'm excited. Yeah. For I mean, you really thought it would move over to movies and mysteries because. <laughs> no, of that. no, no, no. No, it, it's still flagship. Yeah. It's still flagship. No. So I'm interested always in just the process that you take in writing itself. Like, what's that look like? Do you have a special place you like to write? Do you listen to a playlist? Where's your inspiration come when you're writing? Like all the this out. podcast. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I take advantage of the fact that I live on the East Coast. And so as far as um, any of my bosses are concerned, the world does not begin until noon my time. Right. Mm. Um, and so mornings are my opportunity to really get some solid creative work done. And then kind of the business of the day starts at 9 a.m. West Coast time. Mm. Um, 
And so I used to write really, really late at night, but now I'm old and, <laughs> um, and sleep just is so much more attractive. Um, <laughs> so I do a lot of mornings and then by the time everybody on the West coast, you know, does their rise and shine, I usually have something worth talking about. All right. Um, yeah. That's great. That's cool. Uh, you want to yeah, dive in? Yeah, we'll dive in. So we always have some uh, what the hallmarks, some things that we need some clarity on. And uh, we know that nobody can give clarity like, like you can because you, you wrote the darn thing. Um, so my my first question has to do with the uh, the, the big time author. Uh, what's his name? The the author? Anthony, Anthony Cleaver Parks. Cleaver Parks. Right. right. Okay. Cleaver. So um, in your mind, it's a two part question. In your mind, is he older than 15? <laughs> um, because he looks like he's 15. And two, what, what does he what does he write about like what is what's the name and, of the book uh what's it called remember i don't know whatever the, the uh, let nothing, nothing you dismay, dismay. yeah let nothing you dismay is he older yeah. than 15 and what what does he write and about? did you imagine someone having an, any inflection in their voice <laughs> as an actor when you were writing it <laughs> i was picturing a child prodigy mystery author <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. well it worked out good then yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so he's in about he's about 10 years into his career now that's, that's right, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. impressive and, um, so I think his breakout success when he was around 14, 15, and, and now we see him as a mature author in his mid to late 20s. That's right. I love it. Mm, he leaves his emotion author. for the page, too. Yeah, he, yeah, he really does. Any, do, you, do you have any any? Thoughts? I'm sorry. Have you met authors? Like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's valid. <laughs> that's fair. No, you're right. You're right. What, what is the book about, you think? Let Nothing You Dismay. It's yeah. a, um, a Christmas-based um, romance mystery that's right i love uh, those <laughs> that uh, probably takes a lot of the same beats as christmas carol okay um, mm. oh Dickens. i'm excited yeah. to see movies and mysteries adapt that that made yeah. up book to to the to the screen i would love to do a movies and mysteries meta adaptation of anthony cleaver park's books I love that boy, would be what year beautiful. is it when hallmark lets that happen like 2168 or what <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, we still haven't had an interracial couple. <laughs> They're not uh, Mrs. Henley and Luigi. Oh, my oh, bad. Yeah, you why don't you back That's off? True. You know what? That no, but ma- main main couple, but leave it to Toby yeah, yeah, to get it done. He, That's he true. It. No, no, no. I really do. Why don't appreciate you stand that. in the corner over there, no, Dan? I Think about what you've it. done. Mm. All right. Hey, was books, books, books? Was that from the book A Gift to Remember? Or did you make that title up? Books, books, books is mine. Yeah, it is. So mm. my question about books, books, books is, uh, when this is a, a point of contention between Brandon and I, how big, okay. of, how big of a store is this? Is this like like Chaucer's? Are they like? Is it comparable in size to Chaucer's? No, I think they're larger than Chaucer's. Okay, okay but is it a, is it a large? Is it, is it, is it like it Barnes and Noble? Store? Is it an independent store or is it bigger than that? Um, it's probably a regional chain. Okay, okay, a regional chain okay. like. Books of millions. Books okay. Millions. okay. Okay. So we were trying to figure out because I thought like, early on Terrence, who I was a <laughs> huge fan of, he <laughs> said he uh. says that like I want all these bookstores to succeed, and so I uh-huh. was under the assumption that it was another local bookstore. And then why, at, at, like, why are they bothering if they have all this other stuff? If half of their inventory isn't books, if their mm. brain was like they're a big, they're like Barnes and Noble, they're bigger. Yeah. I'm wondering why they care to compete with Chaucer's in this Christmas Eve kind of thing. Like it doesn't seem I like that match books, up. Books, books, even if they're not a substantial chain, they definitely do have like corporate office overlords. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Uh, and, um, and I can promise that we do answer more mysteries about books, books, books in the season. Yes. yes. I love it. I, love I know it. we left you hanging on some stuff. And so I wanted to be able to return and, and, and wrap that up for you. Can, I got, can you tell me, did bringing in the 15 year old author, did that, did that hurt their Christmas Eve uh, thing <laughs> at books, 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 or were they still able to do okay? Oh, no, they did great. They okay. did yeah. great. Good, so good, their good, fourth quarter projections yeah. were on. Oh, All right, that's charts. good. That's yeah. important. I've got a couple lines of dialogue I'd love to to hear your take on. Um, amnesia, <laughs> amnesia really is the unexpected wrench in a paperless office. Now, <laughs> the thing about that line that I, <laughs> I, I, love, I love that line, <laughs> that I love about that line is, is that of all the things amnesia is a wrench in, your, <laughs> your office, your work is probably like, I don't know, way down the list somewhere. Still like a wrench. We're, st- yeah. we're still trying to figure we're out, we're still trying to figure out who mom and dad are. And he's like, mm-hmm. man, this dang amnesia. <laughs> if, only I, <laughs> if only I didn't have it. <laughs> I like that line. 
a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> and also trying to give amnesia. I, believe it or not, I did do my appropriate research on um, okay, when someone has retrograde amnesia, like what is the treatment process for that, so that we could do some hat tips to that, knowing we're not going to go Grey's Anatomy on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and so trying to figure out how to treat retrograde amnesia with a light touch <laughs> um, ended up being a really exciting challenge for me. I did that. laugh at the line. I did yeah. laugh, but in my head I was like, of all the things the amnesia is getting the way of. <laughs> um, <laughs> the and then, memos. And then I'm not, I actually love the line of dialogue. I'm more concerned that our main character, Darcy, isn't the brightest bulb in the bunch. She says, Man, I just wish I knew who this guy was. All I have are his dog, his mail, and his keys. That's 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 everything. Right? Like that's it's a good good bit of information. <laughs> this side of like a postcard with his social security number on it, like she's good to go, isn't she? Right? Well, apparently not. We were missing an insert shot on the uh, return address on those envelopes that would have helped guide that along just a little bit, uh, but. Again, yes. Oh. It's a good opportunity for a light touch with how do we advance this forward. Yeah. I, I just want to know your thoughts on, you know, Miss Hanley and Luigi here, because I'm concerned they, they get the nutcracker tickets. And yeah. then it turns out that those weren't really his uh, they weren't agents to give away. And yet they're still going they to still the kept nut- the tickets. They still kept the tickets. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but those are actually uh, William's tickets to see, those are to, see tickets. to see his, his girlfriend. girlfriend in the Nutcracker. Is that correct? Um, I actually have never considered the possibility that Melanie Porter is in that performance of Nutcracker. I don't think she is. Okay. So, mm. so it's, She's his, off on tour. it's his tickets yeah. to go with whom then? It's his, so he would have received as the high muckety muck PR guy that he is, the mover and shaker in the Philly art scene. Um, he would have just received his complimentary tickets to the nut press. I thought it was he got two tickets yeah. to see his yeah. girlfriend who was going to be in town right. for that performance. We, I guess, you know what? Your idea is better. We're going with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then we Nobody have. Porter was totally in that performance yeah. of the Nutcracker at the Philadelphia Ballet. <laughs> well, then Luigi and Mrs. Henley are the worst, worst people because they're, they're just, like, no takesies, backsies, man. Those tickets are, are ours. So many crimes committed in this movie. <laughs> the stolen Nutcracker tickets don't begin to approach. No, you're right. I think no, no, no. Darcy's character, the breaking and entering. Sure. This. How about the nurse singular? That's like, no, just take the dog home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take, yeah, take, yeah. take the dog. No, just do it. What? Um, I mean, thank God Darcy liked Bailey because otherwise, what the heck would have happened to that dog? <laughs> We don't Who know. Knows? The divine provenance of Mr. Farley being outside with his yeah. grandson Classic. getting the appendectomy. Yeah. yeah, and then they let the dog in later in the movie somehow. Yeah, um, I, yeah. go ahead. I just, I want um, just what was your thought process behind Luigi in general? <laughs> what What's what's his, what's were, his deal? Were you thinking like the words Mamma Mia, but more Italian? <laughs> Or was There's that an no actor taking there. some liberties? <laughs> uh, uh, this um, is going to be a political answer. I can tell already. <laughs> yeah. Um, one, the actor playing Luigi is Italian, and that's how he talks. Um, wow. Yeah. See, you go. Not offensive. Not I offensive. You. I was like, okay, all right. I, I'll and, buy that then. Um, so, and I find that delightful. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I want to meet him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, Luigi was a, uh, character that we did carry over from the book. Um, and I delight in Luigi because he is the most inexplicably generous human being on the planet. <laughs> I don't know how he's um, making money yeah, at to all. the expense of his business. Yeah. Yeah. For right. Sure, right? Know, really? I know. And then fixing the bike and just like whatever you need. Yeah. Um, so we all need a Luigi in our lives. Mm. Very true. Um, mm. uh, and then, um, but Mrs. Henley, who's a very different character in the book, and she um, kind of became a combination of two characters from that, uh, from the source material. Um, but after including Luigi, I, I proposed a name change. Everyone liked Luigi, so we kept Luigi. Um, and, uh, Did you propose Mario? <laughs> 
Warrior. That's gonna be it's gonna be, Warrior. Hear me out. In the sequel. Toad. <laughs> in the sequel, he has a brother. Uh, they open a plumbing shop. That's right. yeah. But after after dropping Luigi into the world of this movie and seeing the role that he plays and crafting Mrs. Henley into the world of this movie, it became very apparent that these two characters need to meet. Mm. Yes. Um, Cause they're going to get on like gangbusters. Yeah, they are. And they yeah, they are. did. That's that stare that Luigi gives her oh, the first time. He my meets gosh. Her. Wow. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Palpable. You? Yeah. She's a lovely woman. I mean, come oh, on. She's, she's great. Always wearing eye catching jewelry. Uh, yeah. Your Goodness. eye will Seriously. always gravitate to Mrs. How that necklace was not just putting her on the are, ground. I don't know. Are, are those two in the, are those two in the sequel? Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Um, Mrs. Henley, uh, we have a theory about th- this one, but where does she store all of her uh, Christmas decorations that she has at will? <laughs> ah, deleted scene. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you- there, is a, uh, there is a storage building behind um, Mrs. Henley's apartment building. Okay. okay. That's disappointing. That's where her yeah. is kept as well. My theory was she just kept, since she owned the building, she kept an mm-hmm. apartment to herself for all her decorations. <laughs> she just chucked oh. them all in there. And uh, I got one more. She said, I had a tenant who raised ferrets. It was a situation. We want to know that situation. <laughs> what's, what's the situation? I would love to hear the situation. I prefer just letting the mind reel with possibilities. <laughs> Didn't have a pet ferret. She was raising like an army yeah, of pe- an army. Yeah. ferrets, right? An army. Yeah. I love it. Man, mm, do you so have any good. more? Or- well, I, I mean, I always want to know about the road trip. There's a road trip that we don't see from Philly to Akron, Akron with Ohio. Will, with, with Willie uh, and, and uh, Aiken. Yeah, and I, I just want to know more about that. What was their playlist? How? What did the conversation turn to? That's that's a very good question because at that time Aiden would still be being reintroduced to music. So William has mm-hmm. like an awesome opportunity to be like, and now this is Journey. Right. You know, yeah. this is a, the, yeah. the gravitas of that it's moment didn't leave me. Soak up all over. Yeah, what's right. unfortunate is William doesn't strike me as the guy who I would want to no, be introducing no, music. No. 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 He strikes me as he the probably, guy I don't want he's to be. He's playing Bonnever the entire playing time. Josh, Josh Groban's Christmas hits for 20 straight hours. Can we have he's anybody? He's got this song where the troops call in. And yeah. It's beautiful. Oh I don't know. I'm seeing William playing something a little more brotastic, equally <laughs> terrifying, but I think he's got a hell of a like early aughts. Brotastic Spotify playlist. Mm. A lot of DMB in that. Okay. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. You can hear yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, he rolls the window. It's cold outside. He rolls the windows down anyway. He's like, bro, he's like, take a look. He's like, bro. <laughs> William is 24 degrees outside. <laughs> Gotta have him down, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you remember ants marching? Come on, you remember this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tune. Wow. You can't not. Man, how um, could you not? I want you to hear Don't Drink the Water before we get back to Aqua. That's right. Did you, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you have anything, last thing, and then I know you're wrapping up time. Uh, did you have anything in this movie that you put in for you, like a wink for, or, or like a character's name or something that you for put your in? your mom or your sister that watch Hallmark movies? Always, always, always. Okay. Uh, uh, in every movie I do, the... Um, Luigi. I'm just kidding. <laughs> supporting characters or uh, the characters that are just referred to, it is always a shout out either to someone in Mississippi or someone um, affiliated with Atlanta theater. Um, oh. And so the Atlanta screenings of my Hallmark movies are really exciting because we all get together at a theater, drop the screen, watch it properly, and everybody screams as they hear the various names. That's awesome. That's awesome. We man. need to be invited. Yeah. When's our next one? Come yeah. on, man. We're I know. You need to come on down Tuesday before Thanksgiving is gift to remember, too. Oh, Dude. Boy. Well, well, let's do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You know how easy Thanksgiving week is. No, Thanksgiving week, <laughs> legitimately, of like you could have asked us to come down any time. Thanksgiving week, we are buried. Yeah. Like it's 12 movies in 10 days. We're I just, was about to say, you yeah. got 40 movies to watch this yeah. year, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Yes, we do. Mm. It's going to be great. I still want to go, though. I, I, I still do. Trip down. We're going to do it. Mm. Um, uh, before oh, come we... on. You can do a live broadcast. Oh, what? my goodness, right, we'll see what Brandon. We we'll see what we can do. Get we'll it together. Get it together. That's all I'm saying. I don't fly to Florida until Wednesday, so we could do it. Let's, I love it. 
I love it. You, you, you heard got it a here. Big airport here. I yeah. Don't know no, it sucks. No, but I would. Got I, one. <laughs> I would come. I would come back to Greenville. I ain't flying out of Atlanta. Oh. Um, Hartsfield. Before, before we uh, before we get done, we like to do a rapid fire. We each right. get to ask you three questions. You got to answer as quickly as possible, or just not, but just do it. Mm. Um, and I always start with my friend Panda. Panda, go ahead. Favorite restaurant. Uh, favorite restaurant is uh, Manuel's Tavern in Atlanta. Best barbecue in Atlanta. Ooh. Oh, I, them's I, fighting words. I've eaten a lot of it. So, Fat Matt's. Fat Matt's is delicious. I'm a big Fox Brothers guy. Fox Brothers, also very, very good. Mm. What's your uh, least favorite Bon Jovi song? <laughs> I can hear it, but I don't know the title Sing of it. Sing like, It's my life. Oh, yeah. oh, and it's now or never. The bell. I ain't gonna live forever. It's a great one. You're yeah. wrong. Go ahead. Uh, where's your dream vacation? Uh, dream vacation would be taking my husband to Scotland. Mm, oh, nice. The dream duo uh, acting pair that you would like to write a movie for. Oh, Wow. Hallmark Universe. Or Any, not anything Hallmark. you want, man. Um, Billy Eichner and Angela Bassett. Oh boy! Wow, <laughs> I would see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> what are It'd you, be a buddy comedy. Yeah, it would. <laughs> What's your? What are your thoughts and your uh, feelings on Casper, the friendly ghost? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Um. It's. I look forward to the gritty dark reboot that acknowledges that this is, you know, a helpful dead child. Yeah, mm. he sure is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you and should not I, be allowed to ask questions I, anymore. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, best movie you've seen recently? Best movie I've seen recently. Um, uh, film stars don't die in Liverpool. Mm, I've heard good things. I've not seen it because we're in Greenville. We don't get, we don't get anything. Um, uh, most expensive drink you've ever had or purchased. Oh, um, so my formal education ended in, uh, 10th grade and really, yeah. And, um, but wow. Years That's actually ago. really long for Mississippi. What is that? A, ba- a, a <laughs> no, graduate I, degree? No. Sorry. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> I'm a queer kid in a town of 4,000 people, and I made it till I was 16. That yeah. was a, yeah, yeah, that's a did. miracle. Yeah, huh? you did. God bless you. <laughs> um, about 10 years later, I got an honorary diploma uh, from an arts academy in New York, and my aunt, who was a uh, doctor, took me out to the fanciest dinner I ever had, and she ordered a $350 bottle of wine. Yeah, she did. And that tasted like balsamic vinegar. The whole time I'm choking it down, I'm like, you could have just given me $350. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know the name of the bottle of wine? Now I'm curious. No, and and, and to be fair, I could have just been drinking balsamic vinegar. (laughs) I was already 10 drinks in at that point. Uh, We drank barefoot for three hours, (laughs) and then she was like, give me the $350 stuff. Um, last one. Um, your, your pen tweet right now is talking about how your version of Avengers would include all of the, the older women that you've created in the Hallmark universe fighting uh, crime for Christmas. I love uh, it. Can you flesh that out just a little bit for me? Maybe what, some Hollywood actresses, maybe, uh, a, a quick synopsis <laughs> of what that movie is. Yeah. So, okay. Um, all right, so I want to take uh, what was that Rebel Wilson movie that just came out earlier this year? The romantic, isn't it romantic? Isn't it romantic? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna do that, but it's gonna be good. And, <laughs> um, and it's a it's the host of a podcast that likes to like goof and snark on Hallmark movies, and then she wakes up one morning and she's in one. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. The only thing, and so she's living inside Hallmark Christmas. And the only thing that's going to get her out of it is if she revisits these various 
female mentors from other Hallmark movies and collects her oh. Infinity Stones that get her back to reality. <laughs> I love Tell that. Tell me that's not so, the best so idea I've ever heard. I, I so, will say this. If you if you could just do us a solid <laughs> and just write a movie uh, and just... Uh, I'm not doing your Saved by the Bell movie, guys. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. No, write a movie It's in, and it includes us yeah. and, and the guarantee you say it's got to be played by the Deck the Hallmark Boys or, that's you, right. or you can't buy it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I am so touched that you think I have that kind of power. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> here's the deal, man. If you ever stop working for Hallmark, you've got a job over here with us. Because mm-hmm. I get the feeling that if you weren't uh, employed by them, you would be one of the best fourth chairs we could have on this show. <laughs> 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 Bring a little bit of balance to the force yep. here, That's fair. I think. So you've always got a job if you ever, uh, you know, not that we pay anything, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> We could, though, if somebody would write the movie. Jobs that don't pay. That's right. right. (laughs) We Uh, cannot thank you enough, Topher, for coming on and be willing to spend some time with us on this Monday. We really do appreciate it, man. This was awesome, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. And may we be the first to wish you a Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas.